Welcome, welcome, welcome to Chris Cast Season 2, Episode 14. This is all about my experience with uh, coronavirus and with the uh, vaccination and with the jab and with my personal experience with that um, and how I decided to get the jab and the steps that I went through and the surprising things that did and didn't happen to me over the course of the 15, 16, 17 month coronavirus since from the beginning uh, to now, which is, you know, uh, mid to late June, uh, 2021. All right. Talk to you in a second. Welcome back to Chris Cass, Season 2, Episode 14, Coronavirus, vis-a-vis Chris Abraham. My name's Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast. Uh, I like to say that I do this all the time, but it's been two months that I haven't done it, and it's because that I've been grumpy, Chris, because I've had various and sundry uh, body injuries that are just lame, like they're, they're not cool. I talk about it in my previous episode. One was a pinched back nerve. One was a bunch of scalding hot oil on my foot, my bare foot. And the third one is sciatica. Sciatica! Anyway, on to uh, the coronavirus. So my very last time out playing with people was with my friend Zandria. And it was the 11th of, 10th or 11th, the 10th of, uh, of March 2020. And we met up at Tapas for Tapas at, uh, hey Google, what's the Tapas restaurant in Crystal City? Hey Google, what's the Tapas restaurant at Crystal City? Jalio. Here you go. <laughs> Jalio. Yeah, it was Haleo's in Crystal City. And I was with my friend, uh, Zandria, and we were drinking. And I hadn't heard much about the coronavirus, to be honest with you. <clears throat> maybe something in Washington State, maybe something in Hunan, uh, or Wuhan, sorry, Wuhan. Um, but nothing much, right? But not long after that, everything closed down, which didn't affect me much at all because I am a monastic, I am a capitalist monk, I'm monastic, I am a ascetic, I am, I am a, a um, I'm just that kind of guy. My, my company's virtual, uh, my relationships are virtual, most of my, I, I, I do go to cafes, but... I'm not a social butterfly. I don't have any wives or kids. I have a bunch of ex-wives who I've never gotten married to, but and I love them very much. But I didn't even, I've never been married, so I don't have any kids. Uh, a lot of my friends don't live locally. And a lot of my friends are freaking paranoid about coronavirus. So uh, extreme, my closest friends are extremely... Uh, bought into the narrative of coronavirus they don't it doesn't matter what the statistics are it doesn't matter uh the the low infection well the low sickness rates the low death rates and they don't understand they don't they don't care much about uh the way the the way people are diagnosed with cases and what cases mean versus actual sicknesses and all these other things like there's a lot of politics at play and um until last month I held, I held, I held, uh, I held back. I didn't do it. Uh, my, my business, my former business partner, Mark Harrison got it. My current business partner got it. And if it weren't for them and they nagged me a lot, they nagged me and they know how to nag me. They know, uh, that I only respond to sugar and carrots and not to vinegar or sticks. So they, um, they finally got through to me and I finally, uh, decided to get the, um, vaccine about a month ago, but, um, I waited until then I waited until, you know, I waited until the J and J vaccine was allowed back into the United States. 
um, because it was being held off for a while for reasons of blood clots and so forth. So I did indeed wait until J&J uh, single dose coronavirus vaccine was uh, made available. But up until then, uh, for, for the last year before then, I had been going almost every day to uh, Idito's coffee, Idito's coffee and social house. And all I needed to do was wear a mask there, find a place to sit, take my mask off and have a completely normal experience. Um, ever since I've given up drinking, which was on the 11th of, uh, of, of March, um, the day after I had my last, uh, big brouhaha, um, with, um, with my friend Zandria, uh, the day after um, my heart was going into AFib, I was suffering. I said, "This is it." The I've 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 checked everything. I've checked coffee. I've checked everything, and the only two things that give me AFib are um, are any type of drinking at all, and um, an AFib, if you want to know, is uh, is is a a heart rate where your heart isn't going in nor this nor, nor normal sinus rhythm it tends to be a da dump ba, dump da dump bump bump and it's variable and it it uh it can it can result in blood clots because your your heart is not pumping fully it's like a load of different things can result in uh from having afib um it is a form of heart failure, is a form of heart disease. So I decided that everything was going so great in my life with regards to the treatment I've been getting from the people at Nova and the people from Virginia, uh, Virginia Hospital Center and all that other stuff, um, is that it, it was not worth it for me to have a, a bottle of wine uh, every couple nights, you know what I mean? And so I decided to stop doing that. And so ever since I stopped drinking, I've stopped going to restaurants, right? Because I'm a pretty good cook. And the only reason that I really go to restaurants, like restaurants, restaurants, is when I want to have dinner at the bar. And I want to have a couple margaritas and I want to talk to the bartender and that kind of thing. Like it's sort of like a lifestyle thing where I go to, since I'm a singleton, I go to restaurants with bars and I go to the bar and I have my bar experience. And, um, so I just haven't had any desire to go to bars or restaurants. And so the only thing that I've been doing is going to cafes. And um, believe it or not, Starbucks was open for a while. You just needed to carry a ma uh, wear a mask until you were sitting down. And, um, and then even they closed because they had a case. Uh, a barista had a case. So... Um, it ended up the only place that I could go is either in my own apartment or in uh, uh, to Idito's. And so I went to Idito's almost every day and it was fun. It was good. I got really close to the to the I want to say cast to the staff there. And I was eating uh, lots and lots of green salads and it was uh, really fine. So. In many cases, because of my lifestyle, because I've, I live in a, I have a virtual world with virtual friends, virtual communities, um, and a virtual company that can rely heavily on people that I haven't seen. I haven't seen my business partner in person in a decade. Um, so, and I haven't, I've never met my staff. My staff lives in, in, uh, in, in India. So based on that i i was n not affected at all um uh it, in fact it gave me better excuses it gave me i didn't need any excuse for why i didn't feel like socializing or going out or doing this or that um makes me sound really antisocial. i mean if you know me to know me is to love me um but yeah i'm very um what's the term for it ascetic I don't know. Um, hey, Google, what is the big museum in St. Petersburg, Russia? Sorry, I don't know how to help with Hey, that. Google, what are the yeah. museums in St. Petersburg, Russia? Hermitage Museum. On the website nationalgeographic.com, they say... 
Okay, I'm a hermit. I'm a hermit. <laughs> the only the only association my brain could make was to the Hermitage Museum. Um, my apartment is a Hermitage Museum, if you will, if you like certain things. Um, so, yeah. So I didn't get it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it in March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April. And then I got it... Uh, Let's see, what day did I get it? I got it exactly on uh, my wallet somewhere else. Well, anyway, uh, I guess I could find out here. Here we are. No, that's Dan's. Uh, Dan, Dan even got his, uh, my business partner, Dan, even got his on March 2nd and March 30th this year. So, oh, here we go, May 23rd. So, um, it hasn't been even a month yet. It's been 28 days. So I got my J and J vaccine at the pharmacy at uh, at my local giant on Ninth uh, Ninth Road South in Arlington, Virginia, South Arlington, Virginia, Penrose Square. So um, uh, the pharmacist named York Y O R K. She asked me if I wanted Moderna or if I wanted J and J, and I just decided to get J and J since I'm already on blood thinners um for my uh for my uh, my uh, for my afib so i did that and i don't even know like did did the jab cause my sciatica did my jab did the jab cause i don't know i doubt it i have a history of it i've had it this bad before so but with all of the um with all the terrible things that um that have happened or have been happening to my body over the last three years, four years, five years. Um, I can't even tell what the effects of the COVID vaccine, the coronavirus COVID-19 vaccine would be on my body. I mean, so I guess it's been 28 days. So technically speaking, I'm vaccinated. So let's all hug each other. Um, Anyway, I, in my previous uh, podcast, my previous episode, I talked about how frustrated I've been with um, with with lower back pain, and then with a, a third degree burn on my foot from stupid oil splattering on my foot while I was cooking, and then to this sciatica that I'm suffering through now. I'm so desperately sad about it. Um, I'm happy about my my sinus rhythm that my heart is having. That's good news, and I'm happy with things the way things are going with my company. That's good news. I'm going to see my cardiologist tomorrow, my specialist uh, electrocardiologist tomorrow, and I can show off my 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 uh, heart that's uh, bumping correctly. And um, alles klar. So anyway, so I'm vaccinated, but I was hesitant. I saw, uh, I didn't see the statistical reason to do it. I saw that the potential side effects were worse than the experiences that I was having by just not taking it. Um, all, every single uh, rational bone in my body, um, if I detached myself from propaganda programming and this um, confluence of of uh anthony fauci is jesus and this concept of science being some sort of excuse for doing something um even after re removing all of those deeply deeply s skeptical feelings that i had not based on being conservative or libertarian but just based on looking at the numbers for half a second right seeing the fact that people die people die every day people die of old age people die of chronic illness people die of the regular flu people die of of uh of suffering from pneumonia people die people die people die and um 
And so bringing attention to people dying is, I believe, a political stunt. Um, attributing everything to coronavirus and every death to coronavirus um, is a political stunt. I believe that if you peel away the political stunt from the actuality and, and uh, if you separate actual coronavirus deaths from so-called cases, which, you know, based on uh, testing procedures and um, is a little suspect, then, you know, six of one half, a dozen of the other. Like, it didn't seem to me that I was in any real proximate danger. It didn't seem to me that uh, it made any real sense. And it made, and, and, and just the idea of a uh, messenger RNA v vaccine was so sketchy to me in a broad way. I mean, I've seen... I've seen MRA treatments being used very specifically for people with uh, different types of cancers and so forth, but I haven't seen. Um, and I think they're they're gaming the numbers, they're playing with the numbers, they're misrepresenting the number of people who get injured from the vaccine. There's so much to be skeptical about, but I don't have any dog in the fight anymore because I got my I got my first and only jab um, of. Uh, of J and J Johnson and Johnson vaccine on the twenty eighth of May, which is uh, the twenty third of May, uh, which is you know almost uh, almost thirty days ago, and so I'm good. I I have um, I can virtue signal now. I don't have to be accused of anything. I'm not a monster. I'm not a, a villain. I can have my own thoughts about it as to whether or not I think someone who's you know, a 21-year-old woman should get it, or whether I think the 21-year-old Chris should get it, um, are entirely different things. I'm an old horse. I'm out to pasture. I know I'm only 51, but, uh, but I'm not a vigorous 51 at the moment. So I thought, well, you know, it uh, appeases a lot of people. Uh, what's the risk? And I'm being highly uh, and completely looked after by by the medical system so if something really bad happens i i trust the treatment that would be available to me and so right now that i got the vaccine um here's my takeaways i do not judge people who decide not to get the vaccine i do not judge people who do decide to get the vaccine i do always judge people who are complete mad hats and completely psychobabble and absolute like meme carriers who cannot stop talking about uh, this, that, and everything else as if um, this was remotely, a vaccine is not remotely a panacea. And I am of the position, if I wasn't a virtual person and if I didn't, you know, I honestly, Dan and I did better during the coronavirus um, than we did the year before. So, it's because of a lot of decisions I made in terms of where I look for business, but it didn't hurt my last year um, because I don't have kids or a wife. It didn't hurt that. Like it was a, a, a net zero uh, or even a positive five in terms of that year. And, um, and I think that closing the economy for 15 months was a terrible mistake. I believe that is going to have longer... Uh, lasting ramifications and I believe that because Americans in any Western democracy because we're such uh, squiggly squids uh, this whole concept of of uh, big um, um, bring back better build back better uh, BW3 um, is going to not work because people are, are going to forget quickly people are going to feel like they were people are not going to feel like that they were held that they that they stayed home to protect others they're going to perceive it in 2020 vision they're going to perceive it as being held hostage and they're going to act like they do um they're going to act exactly like a uh the daughter of a the daughter of a of a, of a pastor they're going to feel like for the first 18 years of their life they were um they were restricted and now they're going to go out and the first thing they're going to do is sign up for TikTok and OnlyFans, right? There's going to be a huge um, sexual 
uh, sexual liberation. There's going to be a, this is going to be the summer of, of, of sex. People aren't even going to care that they're all lumpy and bumpy and that they, that they haven't gotten back in shape after the coronavirus. They are going to, they're going to, they're going to have lots and lots of sex and, um, and they're going to have lots and lots of fun and it's going to be crazy and there's going to be a lot of shootings and a lot of killings because people take guns to parties to uh, because there's t- testosterone in parties uh, and clubs and because that's the culture and it's not a gun thing because that's certainly killing people is not a gun culture thing. Killing people is a crime culture thing. So it's going to be a wild next two years. It'll be, it'll actually be more destructive by and large. Uh, it's going to be slower, slower breakdown because we didn't have a bubble burst, but there's going to be more ramifications towards the health of the, of the Western democracies, including North America, Canada, and, uh, and the United States from this, from this, uh, self self-delivered uh injury than from 2008 2007 from the uh financial crisis uh this is definitely i mean look at this you're seeing you're seeing no matter what they're calling it and even though they're calling it temporary i lived through the 70s i was barely sentient but i was there and um and it's really hard to rein in it's a delicate game to rein in interest rates uh or or there being a um a uh, inflation um once it started once it started you know once inflation started once um supply lines are broken like there's going to be a lot of bump there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh of um of what is it called when your engine um uh, there's gonna be a lot of oh, what's the term when 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 you have a single cylinder uh, motor and you're at the wrong you're at the wrong rev and the wrong gear called lugging. There's gonna be a lot of lugging associated with uh, with the economy going forward, and I don't know. It'll probably be for years, and it's gonna be. And there's there's also there is a there is a a coordinated desire to build back better, and that build back better is probably based on a template more like more like Denmark or more like um, uh, Germany or even a little bit, not even like Great Britain. Great Britain has its own sort sort of of eccentric socialism but build back better is is going to be a lot more like germany where you know germany smells in the summer because people refuse to to flush the toilets because they're so committed to um to a better tomorrow even though when i lived in berlin berlin is the wettest city in the entire world like short of uh, portland and yet people refuse to flush the toilets because they're afraid of wasting water like the german people have such an ingrained concept of of organics of bio bio of of not wasting of the the opposite of 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 consumption and even though they produce the they produce all of the luxury brands in the entire world um you know short of sort of french and italian luxury brands when it comes to something with a motor uh, they own and rock everything and, 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 um, conspicuous consumption in the purchase, purchase of automobiles and motorcycles. I mean, and even watches and, and everything else, they, they behave one way when it comes to their economy, but things are completely different when it comes to the way they behave and they have build back better. They are, they are actively anti-racist. They're actively anti-fascist. They're actively, um, anti-waste they're actively pro-environmental. They're actively anti-GMO. Um, the, they're actively, um, at a certain class, they're actively uh, vegan and, and vegetarian. Um, and so as a result, I believe that Build Back Better is going to be a movement towards making America sustainable uh, and definitely more woke. And uh, we'll see if people are willing to do that. Let's see if, if being woke and, uh, and, and being 
uh, and having and getting your liberties back are going to uh, oh what's the thing hey Google what is Rum Springa According to Wikipedia, Rumspringer, also spelled Rumspringe or Rumspringer, is a rite of passage during adolescence, translated in English as jumping or hopping around, used in some Amish communities. There you go. Uh, this is going to be this this is gonna be America's Rumspringer. Uh Rumspringer. Um, I'm gonna have to share that on social media because I think that's gonna catch on. But it's a niche thing, right? Not everybody knows what Rumspringer is. So, and you know, I'm not Amish. Um, Google's asking me if I'm Amish. No, I'm not Amish. Um, anyway, so that's my take. My take is if I did not receive, um, if I did not receive uh, eight months worth of constant, um, actually, hey Google, when was Pfizer, uh, vaccine sorry i don't know how hey, to google help with that when did Pfizer Pfizer vaccine covid-19 vaccine start here's a summary from the website fda.gov on december 11th 2020 the us food and drug administration issued the first emergency use authorization for a vaccine for the prevention of coronavirus disease 2019 covid-19 caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 January, February, March, April, May, June. Well, I only I only took six months, but I wouldn't have got it at all uh, were it not for the peer pressure by uh, Dan Kruger and Mark Harrison. And honestly, they had, you know, and the fact that I wouldn't lie about something like that, I could have just told them that I got it. I could just tell anybody that I received it. Um, but I don't lie like that's not the kind of lies that I do. I don't do like straight on lies like i had a friend named nicole wilson who loved to go to bars and lies lie to men like she could not go to a bar without completely lying to men about what her name was about where she was from about what her first language was that was her biggest joy of course she was incredibly hot i mean like super hot and i guess super hot blonde girls with blue eyes and little tiny noses can do that kind of thing um but that's not my vibe. My vibe is I have to live a life that's at least interesting enough to have a half a, half an hour uh, conversation with someone about. Um, I, I I held to that pretty well until until my last company fell apart, and I think I did a good job with it. Since then, I had amazing motorcycle trips and that kind of deal. But right now, my life isn't extremely interesting. So once I get past all these illnesses and sicknesses and injuries, man, I really got to change my way. Hold me accountable to this. If you wait long enough in this freaking uh, podcast, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to make the next podcast about this. I'm going to have to make a bunch of commitments to all y'all and you need to hold me accountable to them. Uh, love you guys. Talk to you soon. I'll come back with all my 411 and thank you very much. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Hey, uh, season two, episode 14, Chris Cass. My name's Chris Abraham. These are the closing credits. My name's Chris Abraham. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can have a meeting with me at calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. You can reach me on social media at Facebook. Chris Abraham, Twitter, Chris Abraham, um, uh, Instagram, Chris Abraham, um, 
LinkedIn, Chris Abraham, uh, linkedin.com slash in slash Chris Abraham. You can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can befriend me on uh, No Agenda Social, which is at Chris, or if you're in the Fediverse, at Chris at noagendasocial.com. Um, oh, I have a new uh, sub stack that I need to continue working with. Uh, it's been a few days since I posted, um, and that is chrisa.substack.com. And of course, this is my podcast, which you can find on any place, ChrisCast. Um, you can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple, uh, etc. And it is, I think, anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham, if I have that right. Let me see, let me see. I should have made it Chris Cast, right? I should have changed it to Chris Cast, but I care more about, uh, I think I care more about uh, my uh, personal brand uh, than I do uh, the name of the podcast. So I think it is, um, I think it is slash Chris Abraham. <clears throat> Um, that's it, I think. Oh, if you want to reach me via the various and sundry texting tools, I'm plus one, two, oh, two, three, five, two, five, zero, five, one. So that can get you on to, um, uh, that can get you on to me on signal and, um, uh, WhatsApp and, uh, hangouts, uh, is Chris at garriscorp.com and, um, all that kind of fun stuff. So that's it. I think that's it. I will talk to you soon. Season two, episode 15, which is about uh, metanoia. And I'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>